evaluated by a speech therapist just in case there's something physiological going on like maybe um, there's something going on with her swallowing um, solid foods or anything like that so we're gonna go ahead and get her evaluated and I'm just gonna take you guys along with me on this journey all right I'll see you guys in a bit To the speech therapist's office. So Aviana's here. So we just checked in and now we're just waiting to be called back. Um, I'm not really sure what to expect. So I will keep you guys posted. Hey guys, so we are back from Aviana's therapy appointment. And I must say, I <laughs> learned a lot. So many of you kind of have an idea as to what's going on with Avi and her difficulty with eating. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at The Crockett Way or Facebook at The Crockett Way, you saw some of my status updates regarding my concerns with Avi and her inability to really mechanically break down her food in her mouth. And it's really been a concern for me and her dad for quite some time now because I can recall when we were in the hospital after I gave birth to Aviana, and I was attempting to get her latched on my breast for breastfeeding, she had a difficult time doing so. And it was at that point when the doctor was like, or excuse me, not the doctor, but the nurse. It was the nurse that said, I think she has a tongue tie. So she told us to follow up with our pediatrician and see what the pediatrician has to say about it. So needless to say, um, she did eventually latch on in the hospital and she did pretty good after she got home. So a couple days after leaving the hospital, um, we went to see the pediatrician and we had mentioned to the pediatrician that the nurse had mentioned that Aviana may have a tongue tie if she could be evaluated for that. So the doctor did his physical assessment on her and he said that he couldn't see any evidence of a tongue tie. So it was at that point, you know, we were like, okay, so the doctor doesn't see it, you know, maybe, you know, that wasn't the case. And like I said, she started eating fine with no issues whatsoever. So we didn't have any really, any huge concerns regarding that. So fast forward, here we are a year later and Aviana is having trouble eating. So I thought maybe it was because, you know, there was some sort of delay or um, maybe it was something else that I just couldn't figure out on my own. So today we took her to the speech therapist. The doctor recommended that we take her to the speech therapist to be evaluated because she's at an age now where nutrition is really important. I mean, it's important as an infant, but a variety of nutritional meals are important at her age. So we went in today to see the speech therapist and um, she was just asking me a lot of questions about Aviana and how she eats and how she tolerates foods, um, if she has a desire to eat foods, you know, all those assessment questions. So then she um, basically told me to go ahead and just breastfeed her because she wanted to evaluate how she suckled. So I did that and she immediately saw when Aviana opened her mouth, she saw that Aviana had a physical, physiological um, issue that affected the way she ate. And what that is, she said that it looks like Aviana has a posterior tongue tie. That infamous word came back up, tongue tie. And she says, that's why your child is having trouble with eating. And so I asked her if she could kind of explain to me what a posterior tongue tie is because I had really no idea what it is or even the ramifications of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert right now what um, my research is on the posterior tongue tie. So now you kind of have an idea of what a posterior tongue tie is. So we were really, really, really um, hoping that it was something that can be fixed easily. So she explained to us that Aviana will in fact require therapy. Um, she will need some sort of therapy in order to help compensate um, 
her the issue because it's not something that will correct itself because what can happen is without therapy or some sort of intervention medical intervention it could affect her speech and also the way she eats um it doesn't affect breathing or anything like that thank god but her speech and the way she eats and so the problem is is that with a posterior tongue tie the tongue can't protrude outward or go side to side outward and my husband and i noticed that aviana has never really stuck her tongue out like completely out of her mouth just about it's always like this that far when she should be able to do <laughs> that so um so that was a, a huge thing in her assessment too she says that's a, that's a huge characteristic of a posterior tongue tie she said another characteristic of a posterior tongue tie is um, a child's inability to um, be able to mechanically break down the food in the mouth effectively and so as a result we noticed that aviana does in fact gag a lot on the different foods that we give her and she also um, vomits um, if any of you watched any of our videos about me taking Aviana to the doctor or excuse me the hospital it was because Aviana would be vomiting like crazy and that was for two reasons and one we had no idea about her posterior tongue tie and also she may have some sort of sensitivity or allergy to certain foods because we noticed that whenever she would do that projectile vomiting, it was because we made we have give, we tried to give her um, different types of foods. And I, I remember the first time it happened, that's when we first started to introduce her to foods, um, baby food, table food, whatever. And so, um, so that was that was one of the things that the speech therapist had mentioned as far as a characteristic of a tongue tie. Um, so we were, I, I was very relieved to hear what the issue was because when you know what an issue is you can you know take the steps towards correcting it so because that was a speech therapy evaluation um the insurance company now has to get involved and approve all this stuff and then we can go ahead and start getting her therapy and a part of the therapy the speech therapist gave me some recommendations she said so this is what you can do in the meantime so she gave me some recommendations on what foods to give her like she mentioned about avocado so grabbing a fresh avocado and pureeing it and you know adding breast milk or something to it and try to feed her that way because another characteristic of a posterior tongue tie in children who have that issue is there are certain textures that they don't tolerate and that is so true because I can remember my husband and I trying to give her applesauce to, to eat and she would like take a couple bites of it and then she would be done with it and I can almost see her just sticking her tongue in her mouth, trying to get the applesauce off of her tongue. There are other meals, foods that we have given her and she just does not like the texture of it. If you actually watched us on Facebook, when we went live on Facebook for her birthday celebration last Saturday, you noticed that whenever Aviana went for her cake and she touched it, she moved her hand away really fast because just the feel of it just grossed her out. So one of the recommendations was to find some foods that she can really acclimate with like yogurt. That's something easy because it doesn't require any chewing. It's very low in texture. So um, um, so avocado yogurt, which um, I'm gonna share with you guys today um, what happened when we gave her the yogurt today. So I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit later. Um, another recommendation is that she told us is to allow um, her to have chicken broth or beef broth or bone broth or vegetable broth because it doesn't require, you know, that mechanical um, movement that, that would be required to break down like meats and stuff like that. So she says, give her that and we're going to progress her to other things. So, um, so those were one, those were a few of the recommendations that she gave us. So the next thing she says is, she asked me about breastfeeding and I told her, I said, Aviana still breastfeeds throughout the night and she does. And you know, realistically, Aviana breastfeeds every two to four hours. She's breastfeeding kind of like, she's on a, a infant's breastfeeding schedule. And so she may mention to me about grazing, Aviana grazes, you know, and she says at this age, she shouldn't be doing that. And I, I'm, acutely aware of it but when your child doesn't eat you know you you don't just cut things off 
So um, in a sense, I kind of created a little monster, not call it my baby a monster, but I created this whole um, grazing thing because I, I allowed her to continue to eat during the night because I mean, what I, I just, my baby needed to eat, right? So, um, so her rec recommendation is when we do start therapy, we're gonna try and wean her off of the breast. Now, many of you, if you have followed us on Instagram and Facebook at The Crockett Way, you would see where I would talk about Aviana not taking a bottle ever. You know, um, she actually did take a bottle the first two weeks of her life and then that was it. She refused to take a bottle anytime after that. And we actually were able to find a sippy cup that she likes because she did not even like sippy cups so we got these sippy cups here this is the um the magic 360 sippy cup and just over the past week she's learned how to drink from it and she's really really good at it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pump and give it to her that way so that was some recommendations so um that's what's going on with avi right now guys she has a posterior tongue tie and that's why she's having trouble um, eating. So I'm just so grateful that we finally figured out what the issue is because, you know, we want her to eat. Um, she did mention to me that we may have some difficulty with um, the insurance company, you know, buying into this because Aviana is so healthy. Um, just by looking at her, you would not know that she's just exclusively breastfed and not eating anything else really. Um, so I thank God for that, that as a result of her physiological um, issue, that she can still get nutrients enough to keep up a, he a healthy um, weight for a child her height and age. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, but I'm running into some issues with continuously breastfeeding her and that's because of her anatomy is changing, her jaw and all that stuff, everything is changing. It's causing her to latch on really hard. And so I'm finding that after meals, my nipples are really, really sore because she does, she latches so forcefully now. You know, her, her jaw muscles are a lot stronger than they were when she was much smaller. So um, it's just a few issues that, that are occurring. Um, my goal was to breastfeed Aviana for a year and God allowed me an opportunity to breastfeed her for a year. So I feel that it's time to move on, to allow her to progress to other things. And I'm okay with it. I'm totally, totally fine with it. You know, I know a lot of women, they can't or didn't breastfeed as long as I did. And I'm just very, very grateful. But I am now ready for her to move on to the next phase of her life. And that's eating table food and drinking from a cup. Um, so, so yeah. So, the there's another thing that she had mentioned to me. She said that if therapy doesn't work well enough, um, she said that there may be um, medical intervention that's required, like surgery. So, we don't really want to get too ahead of ourselves. Um, but she did mention that to me as a possibility. Um, so later down the road, if therapy does not work. So I'm hoping that therapy will in fact work and surgery will not even be an option. So um, I'm just asking that those of you who do believe in the power of prayer to please pray for our baby girl, Avi, um, that she will get through this, that we will all get through this. So on a pop, Excuse me, on a positive note, I want to mention to you guys, so I went to the store, we stopped at the store on the way from therapy, and we went and got yogurt, the Gerber Baby Yogurt. It's, it, it's really, really good, actually. I tried it myself, it's a strawberry. And um, the speech therapist said to me, during meal times, she said, strip her completely naked, you know, of course, leaving a diaper on her, but strip her, and allow her to really just dive into the food. She says, don't, you know, clean her up because she gets it on her face or on her chest. She says, let her feel the food on her body because kids with her condition, posterior tongue tie, they have a, they have a tendency of not liking the way, you know, stuff feels because it's a texture issue. So because kids use their mouths to explore the world, having foods and things all over them, you know, will help desensitize them. So she says, strip her down and just let her go to town. So Kendrick and I have been allowing her to just play with her food. You know, every I feed her like breakfast and lunch. I'll put her food on her high chair and I, I know she's probably not gonna eat it, 
but I, I let her just kind of explore with it. So the, the speech, I was really um, impressed that, you know, I knew to do that. So she says stripper. So I hadn't been doing that. So today with the yogurt, what I did was I just took the, the foil, um, the foil, I just pulled it back and I got one of her kitty spoons and I placed it inside of there and I placed it on top of her high chair table, put her in the high chair and I said, go to work. And so she kind of looked at me crazy. So I kind of stuck my finger in it and I tasted it and I was like, mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. And so after a couple times doing that, she kind of felt, you know, um, pretty anxious to go ahead and give it a try herself. So she kind of stuck her hands in it and she didn't pull away, you know, acutely. Like I, I figured she would, she didn't do that, but she did grab the spoon and she did put the yogurt in her mouth that was on the spoon and she liked it guys. She actually liked it. So I was really, really happy about that. So now we have a new food that hopefully she'll continue to like and continue to explore. So that's a plus, that's a big thing because before guys, when we would put food in front of her, she would throw it on the floor and want nothing to do with it. The only things that Aviana really likes to eat are oranges, potato chips, and um, I purchased her some of those um, popcorn. It's not popcorn, but it's, corn um, puffs so it kind of tastes like popcorn and she likes those too um, and she likes strawberries so there are a few things that she would like to eat she does like frozen baby food the pear excuse me the pears she likes it when I freeze it and give it to her that way because she loves Italian ice and that's what it tastes like to her so there are a few things that she will tolerate, but I'm just hoping and I'm very optimistic that she will start to eat a lot more and eventually, you know, she, her compensatory mechanisms will kick in and she'll be able to bypass that whole posterior tongue tie that she has. So I just want to thank you guys so much for listening to our video. I wanted to make sure that you guys come along with us on this journey of learning more about um, tongue ties in children, especially our baby girl, and how we're overcoming this challenge. It is a challenge because it's food, guys. It's food. You, you, our babies, are, we, we live for food. You know, we live. Um, in order for us to live, we have to eat. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's a big deal. It's not just something that we can sweep under the rug and just hope for better days. Um, so I'm just really grateful that, you know, God gave me the wisdom to push the doctor to get this um, referral sent over to a speech therapist because you know when there's something not right about your children. You know. And that's an instinct that we should all trust as parents. You know, don't always take what the doctor says as gold. You know, the speech therapist actually mentioned to me today, she said, I wish she would have come in earlier, you know, and that hit me so hard in my gut because it was the nurse at the hospital that said she has a tongue tie. So, you know, <laughs> just you really need to, you know, fight. You really need to be persistent when it comes to things that you hold dear, you know, but I'm just grateful that she's not two years old and this is something that we're trying to accomplish. So I'm grateful. Um, but I just want to thank you guys so much for your prayers. Those of you who have prayed and sent your well wishes, I truly appreciate it very, very much. Um, I just want to ask that you continue to pray for our baby girl, Avi, that she does respond positive, positively to her therapy and she does start to eat like a child her age um, and this just becomes a thing of the past. So um, if you are new here, thank you so much for coming. If you would love what you see and would like to see more of what we have to offer, we upload at least twice a week. So please consider subscribing to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you will always be notified whenever we upload a new video. All right, guys, we love you here at the Crockett Way. You take care and God bless. Bye. Thank you.